After the two hurricanes that really walloped the Southeast US uh, in the fall of this year, I had a client who was like perfect retrofit situation. He had, he got hit by the hurricanes, there was damage, he needed to fix the damage, and while he's at it, he was like, let's do some cool stuff to this house. And this was actually a really fun story where he actually got what he wanted. So I'd like to show you this. Hey, Corbett, how are you doing? I'm good, how are you? Oh, I've been better. <laughs> are you there every day airing it out? Uh, no, we've been taking some breaks, but we've actually have some people helping us, so it's been a little, uh, it's been a little easier than doing it alone, which is good. But this was Helene that did that, right? Helene did the water, and then, um, ironically, the place we are temporary re relocated to uh, got water from Milton. We had just bought a new couch and a new bed. <laughs> but my chief concern right now is obviously mold remediation, which I think we're we probably got a good handle on, and then future indoor air quality and just general comfort. Um, it's concrete block. You know, we're kind of stuck with a lot of you know, choices that we didn't make. Yeah. Um, but anything we can do to improve that um, is kind of what we're looking for. So just some advice on that and, and okay. or whether or not to bother. <laughs> Maybe some of it might not be worth it. Um, uh, yeah, that's that is a good point. Okay, so what died? Did the, the AC unit die? Uh, it, it actually is still running. Uh, ah! Did lose <laughs> Don't our, you hate that? <laughs> yeah, I know. It's not long for this world. It's a comfort maker which i think is a goodman so it's you know it's it's trash uh it's probably cost us more to run it than it did to put it in uh -huh. at this point um so i'm i'm comfortable with the notion of replacing that with something efficient um you know we don't have any sort of exterior air exchange uh which is a problem for us because uh i bought one of those aeronet um sensors to see the carbon dioxide and the levels are always ridiculous in florida you know you're not really opening your doors and windows all that much uh to get that fresh air in so i'd like to figure out a way to solve that um you know the dilution factor right because i think that's that's a huge help for us or would be a huge help um and then you know probably some recommendations on uh any sort of insulation we might be able to do with the concrete block i it seems almost like a, a losing battle with that because you don't have any stud space you don't have any wall cavity space to speak of um unless you go outside and i don't know that the juice is worth the squeeze for doing that yeah right i think it's roughly 1800 square foot air conditioned well and then we have a garage that's also conditioned that's probably about 400 -ish square feet wait the um, garage is air conditioned yeah so I, have a, I have a mini split in that okay um, that's the one you were saying is the most comfortable room in the house yeah <laughs> and that's okay. got spray foam on the ceiling but nothing else and the air okay. handler for the house is out in the garage as well, but it doesn't condition yes. the garage. Right. Okay. So with so minus the garage, because we'll like yeah, we'll treat that like a shed that happens to be touching the house. What's the square footage again? About eighteen hundred. Eighteen hundred. Okay, great. And then um ceiling height? Eight ceiling is eight foot three, I believe. In the vented attic. There's six <laughs> inches of insulation on the floor? I I think so. Okay. It's original. Uh, it's a it's a bat insulation. I think like it's that. got some kind of a foil on it as well on the bottom. Um, the part that's higher. touching the ceiling drywall. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and oh. it's touching. It's not like separated or anything. That's very interesting. Um, in your normally that would be like how you would install it up north is vapor barrier that that foil yeah. layer <laughs> vapor barrier vapor barrier always goes on the warm side, mm -hmm. and if it's in an attic in Florida, it should be <laughs> facing up. So zone two walls are supposed to be code minimum an R four continuous or an R six uh, intermittent. Um, is that engineered that flooring? Uh, this is tile. Oh, great! Yeah, <laughs> got lucky there. So yeah. I don't know if you can see. So it's there's definitely some kind of a paper on the front, mm. but the entire. I think that's tile. drywall, and then they yeah they okay. coated it. I okay. think it's. I don't oh, know. You're right. Is. Yeah. You know what? You're absolutely right. That's just paper. So that's okay. gonna come off. Okay. Yeah, that okay. So then I would do the whole thing. I would not mess around with that. Yeah. And by the way, those uh furring strips look like they were actually three quarter inch. Yes, they are. So you can't meet code there, but it's better than it was, right? So that's right. kind of how I'm operating. But if we gotta go more than we will, but and the problem is if we're gonna do this right, then we wanna take the entire system of the home and mm -hmm. try and hit the same performance level on everything. So we're looking at the roof, your roof R value that you're supposed to be hitting at R38. 
okay. per code. And that's not, these aren't numbers that were just like pulled out of a hat. These are based on a lot of energy models that the national labs would have done. And I'm going to do a video on this soon, but basically um, if we could get 12 inches of insulation in your attic, that would be better. Is there duct work in your attic? Did you say? Yeah, there is duct work. Um, hmm. And it's probably one of the other things I'd want to change. This is interesting. You have this feature in your house, which would be super helpful for being able to reduct outside the attic. Do you have ceiling fans in these rooms? We do. All of them? Yeah, pretty much. Uh, not the living room, but everywhere else. Okay. Check this out. This, if you could get a system to live in there, having this system live out here is makes it vulnerable for air leakage. Those that Goodman system that's sitting out there definitely mm -hmm. has holes in it. Like when we oh, yeah. recommend that people start air sealing their duct system, the first place we always go is the box itself. Yeah. So this thing is definitely going to be infiltrating humidity, temperature from the garage, but also pollutants and da, 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 all the stuff that's in there. So if we could get rid of that, um, then that would be awesome. And somehow put like you could put a ducted mini split yeah up here you could get at every single one of these rooms from this central hallway if you were to drop the ceiling which you probably don't want to do are you mm -hmm. guys like how do you feel about that i mean uh within reason i i, I probably wouldn't be against it um because again i'm i'm looking for comfort and yeah mini splits were something we were thinking about too inducted or traditional Okay. I actually just got off a call with somebody who I'm going to make a video out of that consult call. And he replaced his ducted system with ductless mini splits. Mm -hmm. And he then became one of my clients because he's like, the air quality in here sucks. Like I got to figure out something better because now I feel like <laughs> I made a mistake and maybe we should go back. Yeah. So the duct system is really what you need. Or, okay. That's yeah, what... That was my, my other issue is like, if you do mini split, a uh, ductless mini split, then you don't have a way to get that fresh air distributed if you decide to do some right. sort of air exchange. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So the two things about this central hallway area here is um, that you could potentially uh, go up with it if you had to up with a reverse soffit into the attic. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's, it happens to be right at the ridge where you've got that three foot you know what I mean? So like yep. mm -mm, that cut that is nice. Um, that is there. Is it trusses, web trusses in your attic or no? It's a uh, traditional framing. Oh so great, it's okay. Totally, totally open. Yeah, good. And then you'd say that eight, eight feet is kind of hard to bite down into. Yeah, yeah. But if we're gonna be abandoning the ductwork that's exposed up in your attic, which guaranteed is adding at least a ton and a half of load to your house where you are. I would say that you could do it with a much smaller system. In fact, for 1,800 square feet, I'm thinking like probably like two tons if we oh, did wow. this trick. Especially if you've got that garage still, that that one's still chugging, right? Yeah. You want the garage? Okay, great. This central hallway is not a thing that you come by accidentally most of the time. So the fact that he had access to this is amazing. We could sync this pancake uh, style ducted mini split, which looks like this, by the way. Um, so this is a ceiling cassette. This is a ducted mini split. You see how it fits inside the ceiling. Here's what it looks like naked. Um, this would be the entire kit. And there are, as you can see, multiple uh, manufacturers who make this kind of thing. So it's made to be sunk inside of a ceiling. And your issue when you do this is that you can't have ducts do this inside of a drop ceiling. You have to have ducts never ever cross. So luckily, He's got this big living room where we could put this central return either in the sidewall if we do a dropped ceiling in that in that central hallway there, or we could do a ceiling grill in the hallway here, uh, just just to the side of the living room. That can come over, go into the butt end of the uh, heat pump. There would be a filter in this, and that's gonna that would be a little challenging. Or else we're just gonna have to use the typical filter in this, um, but getting access to these things you can have big access panels in the underside of the ceiling here we have the space here for the erv to be mounted in the ceiling with the uh outlet of it this is again this panasonic spot erv so this is the unit it is again like a pancake style it's made to be sunk inside of that ceiling um, so it's nice and narrow it has only two ducts connected to it because it introduces, so these are the, the um, returns right here where it sucks stale air out of the house. 
And then this right here, I believe, is the one where it sprays the fresh air to, into the corner. So it's like kind of coming out. So they're trying to limit the amount of backwash that you'd get in this system. So if we could point this supply, the fresh air coming into the house at the actual return, then we could have the fresh air immediately get picked up and get distributed into each of the closed off rooms, office, uh, master bedroom, bedroom one, bedroom two, and also into the family room. The family room is probably not, it's, it's fairly open uh, probably to the rest of the house. So that would enable us then to also have a dehumidifier. And this is, I'm, I know I'm getting like probably the reverse soffit, building a room up and into the attic and air sealing and insulating the walls of that room, that might be a little more realistic for getting all this equipment in here. But we could have a return here also in the hallway. Hallways are great for returns because we wanna be able to pressurize certain rooms and depressurize other rooms. And if we're gonna be pulling all of this air out of a room, we want the room to be as big as possible. This room in this case includes kitchen, living room, family room. So that's where all of the air is being returned to and then sucked out of. That has another benefit by the way of, if I put the thermostat and the air quality monitor and, and, and all the other sensors and whatever I've got on the wall in this hallway, I know that I'm getting a sampling of basically all the air in the house. It's all returning to this one location to then be pushed back to the equipment, pulled back to the equipment is more correct. So we could introduce the dehumidified air right into the supply right there. So now we've got uh, circulation with penetrations into each of these rooms. And by the way, I asked him about ceiling fans because in this case, we have the door to this room being right underneath the supply. If there was not a ceiling fan running in this room 24 seven, then when the air comes out here, what it's really gonna wanna do is immediately go down and go under the door. It will not go anywhere close to the bed in this bedroom. Likewise, over here, it's right over the door. So the ceiling fans are a necessary ingredient. You cannot skip this. In this design, ceiling fans being on 24 seven, absolutely non-negotiable for this to actually work. So we've got these bath fans here and here. We've got the kitchen exhaust hood here. We've got all this circulation going on here. All of that is gonna then mix that air. We have filtration built in with the filter that's gonna be here or inside the ceiling plenum, but you wanna make it easy to access again. We have the uh, capture of all the things that we just mentioned, the kitchens and bathrooms. We have the distribution of the dehumidified air, which in Florida, super, super important, especially if we're then gonna be using an ERV, which would actually come before the dehumidifier. You need a dehumidifier. The ERV is like, if you want your air to be healthy, let's go ahead and do that. The core in that, the ERV core, energy recovery ventilator, ERV core, will cut in half at least the temperature spikes and the humidity spikes from outside. And then your dehumidifier only has to work half as hard. And that is why that pairing is really helpful. Uh, and then we've got the ability to also distribute this dilution air that's coming in here. So we're taking the stale air from the central hallway, which is like mm, air that we probably would have fed to our children. Uh, it's perfectly fine to breathe. We're just, we have to take stale air from somewhere. He already has these bath fans in place here. And the house is not that airtight as we already know, or suspect. Again, Bill's gonna get a blower to test to make sure. But this kind of a system could solve all of his problems and the whole crux of this design is the fact that his floor plan is so beautiful for this. So like use this. When you go and visit a home and you're thinking of buying it, think about how easy it would be for you to do something like this to it. If it's got a lot of big wide open spaces and vaulted ceilings, no way. Like you're not going to make that work. So you're looking for a very specific thing when you're trying to do this approach uh, with a home. And the geometry of the space is where it begins. Remember, I have courses online for ventilation and for HVAC testing and design. I also do one-on-one -on -one consulting. And if you'd like to go ahead and take advantage of that, please feel free to visit Build Performance Workshop. Comment below if you have other things to add about things that we didn't consider on this retrofit that could actually work for Bill as well. Thanks again, Bill, for letting me share your story. You guys comment, like, subscribe. Tune in next time.